What's good, everybody? This is Kenny Cummins here, uh, chilling with Jeff and Kenny C. And I'm going to call this the Lexington Music Awards edition for a special interview I got going on. And joining me at this time is one of my good friends in the local music scene, singer, songwriter, lead vocalist of one of my favorite local bands, Alcatraz, Shakedown. And <laughs> nice. And, of course, he is a nominee for Album of the Year for his latest record entitled Postcards to Myself. I'm joined with Eric Bolander. What's good, man? Hey, Kenny. I appreciate you having me on, man. Uh, yeah, man. Like like I was telling you before I pressed that record button, like this has been like nearly a year in the making trying to get <laughs> you on. It seems like every hard to get a hold of so done. Yeah, man. You either got a solo <laughs> set or you got all your bands doing your thing and um but I'm yeah. but I'm glad try to stay busy with it, you know, try to stay yeah. stay busy with the music and stay connected. That's true, that is true. Well, appreciate having you on. Let's start with this nomination, man. First and foremost, congratulations, nominated for I appreciate al- that. Album of the year, postcard to myself. Uh, now that you have had some time to, you know, reflect on it and everything, how's it feel? Uh, it's good, man. I just, you know, I really, I really just appreciate, you know, the nod, and I appreciate folks that that reached out. You know, it's not something I really necessarily advertise or anything, but uh, I do, uh, I do appreciate you know fans and friends and musician friends that have are involved and that that gave me the nod. You know. So let's talk about this album, this award-nominating album, Postcards to Myself, which started off as being funded by fans and supporters in the local music scene. I mean, how's it feel, man? Because of the fans, literally, you was able to put work on this album and have it released. Yeah, I, I set up a Pledge Music account, which um, I like to preface this with saying that I'm not a big a uh, handout guy I'm not a big uh, Kickstarter I know it, it does a great job and people that do those types of pro, uh, programs but what I loved about the Pledge of Music is basically you're giving friends fans an opportunity to invest in what your project is and get the actual product so everything from uh, handwritten lyrics of course and digital downloads to where it's not marked up that much more you know so they might pay an extra five bucks to the CD, but they know that that five bucks is going towards your studio time. So because of that, I was actually able to, you know, really um, pay off the studio time and, and had some money to go toward the production and t-shirts. So that, that was a huge, huge help to get the thing going. And it, and you celebrated in grand style. You was at the uh, Manchester Music Hall to celebrate. Yeah, the CD one- release. Yeah, for the CD release. Uh, what I remember, it was during WrestleMania weekend, uh, and I was unable to make it. But uh, it it was a huge turnout, for what people told me. Uh, talk, go back to that Manchester Music Hall experience. I mean, for a well, lot- I, you know, I appreciate Adam. That's that's there. He runs Manchester, and they're they're doing really good work and trying to try and improve and 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 fix some mistakes and things like that. They're constantly trying to work on that kind of thing. And to let a local guy, you know, come in and do a an album release at a venue that size, you know, it's about 1,000 or 1,100 capacity. So I mean, it's much larger than Cosmic Charlie's or the Burl. And, uh, of course, the Burl wasn't open at the time. But, you know, Green Lantern's been great to me in some other places. But I kind of wanted to try to do it that big. And, and the, uh, he, he let me have that space and, you know, and, was very generous about about the door, and, and I was able to get three amazing Lexington groups, the Landers, the Roosters Crow, and Brian Meeks, and Kentucky Suns, and uh, part of Alcatraz Shakedown played with me. You know, they were gracious enough to step in and help me out. So it, it, it was a good turnout. You know, of course, about a couple hundred people probably, but still that's pretty good for a local show. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was I was really excited after that night. And, you know, it's definitely been quite a year for you, not just as a solo artist, but, you know, the band as well. And, you know, you definitely become one of my favorites, local acts. Uh, every time I come Thank through, you. you'd be like, yeah, that's that Kenny Cummins fellow, you know. 
<laughs> you know, I, and, I, and I support local music, man. People tend to think that I support one genre of hip hop, and I do, but I, I'm a versatile guy. I listen to all types of music. And the yeah, and you're you're there though. Yeah. See, there's a big difference between some folks that uh, I, I I do this artist market. Not to get off subject, but I, I do an artist market. And I always say is the tagline at the bottom is uh, uh, support local, um, buy local. It's not just it's not just a bumper sticker. You know what I mean? Uh, and you you represent that big time. You represent the guy that actually goes out and checks out a rock show. You go out and check uh, Americana show uh, singer songwriters and and you support them by turning around and sharing things on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and make it, you know, you help make the scene better because you're out there and actually physically listening and, and responding as opposed to someone that's just sitting at their laptop or on their phone at home and not really, not really getting out, but pretending, you know, kind of that they're a, a local supporter. I definitely appreciate the words, man. And, you know, the thing about the local music scene is, is, is rejuvenated me as a radio host. You know, from the moment that I moved back to Lexington, a little, a little less than two years ago, what I wanted to do is check out the local music scene, see what it was all about. And I'm glad sure. I was, and I, and I'm glad I was able to. The first time I seen you, it was at Paulie's, and um, you was there. Oh and, yeah, and, okay. And, and it was Kate, with yeah, and Kaylin Bradford, who um, once upon a time lived in Kentucky, now lives in Georgia, that was her album release uh, at Paulie's. And I was like, man, I enjoy the show. Kaylin's very nice, down to earth, country gal, you know. Yeah, very, uh, very, very sweet. Very yeah. down there. So, um, as far as you, man, what do you have in store for 2017? Like upcoming shows? What you got going on? Uh, yeah, I got pretty pretty active here early on. Um, the first off, after the shakedown, we'll have an EP release here coming fairly soon. Um, we have our masters back, and we're working on artwork and those types of things. So be look on the lookout for that announcement. And then solo, I've got I'm uh, sitting in at Brazabana Restaurant. Uh, this Friday, six to nine, um, and then I'm full band the 21st of January at Cheapside. Will be a full band the 27th at Third Street Dive in Louisville with uh, Zane Hilton. And Zane Hilton's coming here on the 28th in Lexington at the Green Lantern with me as a full band too. So uh, I've got some cool stuff up, and then a uh, uh, pretty big opportunity. I'm playing February 3rd at Manchester Music Hall, opening up for the Wilkes and Still Drivers. Really excited about that. And then last, lastly, Alcatraz Shakedown is playing at the Burl with the Blackfoot Gypsies on February 10th. Man, this dude is one one of the busiest dudes um, <laughs> in, in I local try to music be, scene. No, you know? no, nah, nah, you don't try to be. I know you are, man. You <laughs> Like every week, you either doing a solo act or you with the band. I mean, like, but, I, but I'm glad I was able to get you on and – and again, congrats on the nomination. Uh, Thank you, I appreciate con- that. Congrats to the rest of the nominees. I was nominated for best DJ f- award for the second year in a row. Um, just, congrats, man! This is awesome, and you know, we we we, we love music. We 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 enjoy. It. We 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 passionate about it. Well, you as an artist and performer, me as a fan and a supporter. Well, let's get into some something else, you know. You All are right. you are a fan on a particular team, um, you know, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, number one yeah, seed buddy. of the NFC. You can find you can find a baby picture of me with yeah. my older brother next to me, and he's wearing a Dallas Cowboys t shirt. So that's how that's how thick that's grown. So uh, yeah, I've been a fan on the, the very very bad years, and then you know the nineties were pretty good. And now been a, been a, been a long stretch, and so this year has been a lot of fun watching them play at a higher level. I mean, how how do you feel about the way Jerry Jones has handled this whole quarterback situation going with Dak Prescott from the jump and sticking with him, even though it, it I, I like to consider Romo like a foster child to Jerry because <laughs> he's he's meant so much to him and he 
he did give him a big contract after all. But, yeah, but Prescott. I mean, is I mean, there's no, there's no secret that you know Jerry Jones is a huge, huge supporter of Romo. But you know, and, and rightly so to a degree. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, he recognizes sometimes he recognizes that he's not a football guy and that he's a business guy, and he let his coaches really work with Dak and and move forward, especially the offense coordinator, and and they've developed su- such a good chemistry with everybody else and. You know, and it really stems back to like years ago. You know, Jerry Jones went three years in a row taking a first round offensive lineman, and uh, even back when Johnny Menzel was on the block, and he got you know some flack for that. Now they've got three or four Pro Bowl offensive linemen, you know, and just crushing it. Yeah, I mean that's a big, big contribution to why he is so uh, successful as well. So I, I think going back to your question, I think he's handled the quarterback situation about as perfect as it could. So with the playoffs approaching and they await for their opponent in the divisional round, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after, who do yeah. you who do you consider the biggest threat? The the, the I, I gotta say the, I gotta say the Giants. I mean I mean they got us twice. They got our number, you know. Yeah. Back in two thousand and when they win the Super Bowl last, was it twelve? Uh yeah. Uh, yeah, but whenever it was, they beat we, we were the division leaders. They beat us first round. Oh, um, of course, we didn't have first round buy then, but yeah. you know, so I, I'd say them, but like a non biased non division aspect, uh, Aaron Rodgers playing. I mean, the best he played in a long time. So that game, the winner of that game, will be tough either way. And I believe, I believe Cowboys play the winner between the Giants and Packers. But if not, they got was it just Seahawks and the Lions the first round and. For the championship, I think they'll play. I can't remember how the, how the seeds line up, but I believe Atlanta has the number two seed, um, and I think Detroit three, Seattle four. Um, I got you. But the it's going to be an interesting postseason. I'm a yeah. I'm a <laughs> I'm a Ezekiel Elliott fan because I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of Buckeyes football. He's a former Buckeye, and just to see how he has emerged. Um, yeah, you know, a lot, a, a lot of people are saying that, you know, one of those two guys, Prescott and Elliott, could not only win the offensive rookie of the year, but they should be in the MVP discussion. And I agree. Um, yeah, why not? I mean, they, they've done something that a lot of rookies haven't. So I mean, I, I don't, I don't argue with that. I don't dispute that. Yeah, you know, Matt Ryan's name's in the hat, and sure, uh, I'm sure uh, um, Aaron Rodgers as well. Oh, yes. It's definitely going to be an interesting postseason. Now, before I let you go, why don't you go ahead and promote your social media links and where people can listen to uh, your music as a solo artist and the bands as well. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, So, uh, Eric Bolander Music is my my Facebook page. Um, At Bolander Music on Twitter and Eric Bolander on Instagram. And my album postcards to myself is available on pretty much all your your digital uh, medias uh, except for Pandora, so Spotify and iTunes, Amazon, and whatnot, YouTube as well. And then Alcatraz, our first album's on iTunes and Spotify and YouTube, and we are Alcatraz Shakedown on Facebook and at a Shakedown on Twitter. Um, so check us out and look us up and kind of keep track of. Uh, show schedules and uh, EP announcements and things like that. The EP for the band is coming soon. Album release shows coming soon. Postcards. Yeah, look for that announcement. We're hoping, so we're playing with the Black Set Gypsies February 10th Mm -hmm. at the Burrow and Arctic Shakedowns, hoping that we may actually have physical CDs by then, but (laughs) don't hold me to that, but we might actually have it. And then, of course, we'll We'll try our best to schedule something late March or something like around there for the release. Do you still have copies to post calls to myself? Uh, I sure do. Yeah, I'll have those at all my shows coming up. Cool, cool. Well, I've already and my- and if you forgot the dates I mentioned after you listen to this, if you don't want to re-listen, just check out my Facebook cover page. I try to keep it updated with uh, my solo dates coming up. Uh, absolutely, man. Well, it was great having you on. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Truly appreciate it, man. 
Ken, thanks yeah, for having yeah. me. Thanks for help promoting uh, my music and Lexington's music. And, uh, you know, uh, I think from all the musicians you've reached out to and hung out with, I think everyone really, really appreciate that. Absolutely, man. I'm proud to say that I support local music and great talent such as yourselves and, and Shakedown. Uh, and, you know, for the people that go to the Shakedown shows, wonder who's the – Who's the who's the dude that be yelling shakedown? <laughs> That's yeah, you. That that would be me. That would be me. One of these days one of these days I want to introduce y'all uh on a show or whatever and then I could just do my hey, you got it. so uh but the, be like WWE. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like it. This this is one of my favorite dudes on the local scene, Eric Bolander, now award nominated. Eric ah, you can leave that part out. So, yeah, <laughs> I, no, no, I'm gonna put the award number. It's 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 well deserved, man. It's well deserved. I appreciate so, it, man. Thank you. Um, so check out check out Eric Bolander. Check out the band coming to a venue near you in Lexington and surrounding areas. And check out the Lexington Music Awards coming up on January 29th, six to eight p.m. at the Lyric Theater. Tickets are still available. Go to the Lyric Theater website for more info. I post all that stuff on the description on the YouTube video. And that will conclude the interview as I continue my first week of the new year of interviews. Uh, thank you all for the support as we get ready for our 10 year anniversary show coming this August. Uh, for Eric Bolander, I'm Kenny Cummings signing out. Take care, everyone, and thanks for listening. <laughs>